Hi everyone, today we have a new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from Edward and this is a limited edition kit so here we have so called the zipper and it's a F104C Starfighter during Vietnam War in 148 scale it should be quite an interesting build and straight away I can say that here we have the kinetic plastic while the previous F104 releases were featuring the Hasegawa plastic here we have a different manufacturer and because we did not review the original release from Kinetic it will be even more interesting to see what is included here. So first of all the box size is quite huge for uh, the 148 scale release. Here you can see comparison with my hand. We have quite nice box art. I would say it's uh, standard for limited editions from Edward and the kit number is 111.69. So uh, as I said, it's a limited edition, so that's why we have a lot of uh, markings here, so you can see them all here. And also, if I flip it over like this, uh, here we have some information that it was made, obviously, in the Czech Republic, but, well, kinetic plastic is not from Czech Republic, as you can understand. And here we have a small list of the features which are included. So, as I said, kinetic plastic, also some brushing add-ons, P parts, masks, and also decals for seven markings, which are printed in Edward of course so it's quite a package and I think some others will be happy to get all of this together by the way here on the side we have also the barcode with the price tag and it's written 69.95 euros which is quite reasonable for all of these things which you get in one box and now I'm trying to open this box and show you what is actually inside so that's what we have inside plenty of space i would say so you won't have any issues with the broken plastic but the spruce itself uh, the set is quite large so that's why the big box was used instead of the small one because as far as i remember the f104 on hasegawa was uh, in a quite small boxes so it's a sealed no it's not sealed it's a resealable plastic bag so it should be even faster to open. I was already going to cut through it. Okay, so let's open it and take a closer look together. So again, on the top we have another plastic bag with a clear sprue, so I will just open it right away. It should be easy to do as well because we have again resealable plastic bag. And we will take a closer look together. Okay, so what do we have here? And let's zoom in a bit because we have here the canopy parts. As you can see, the molding quality is really great. If you have some experience with kinetic plastic, this is basically the same set of parts as what you get in the original plastic kit release. And we also get the separate portions, let's say, or sections of the canopy. So it means you can open it and show what is in the cockpit. So it's really great thing in a 148 scale aircraft. And I think all modellers will appreciate such uh, think included in the standard package. Next we continue with the uh, first grey plastic sprue. This one is quite large and frankly speaking I did not expect such large fuselage from 148 scale F104. Note that we have both halves molded together with the tail fin. Of course the nose section is separate here and that's really great. I hope it is molded as a single piece part but we will see it uh, further on the separate uh, plastic sprue so as for the external features here we have recessed panel lines and rivets so i guess that's worth zooming in now because those panel lines they're not as deep as some others would like to have so that's why you should be careful with the layers of paint and primer because it will be easy to lose these elements and then it will be really difficult to bring them out we also get the wing parts here, as you can see they should be assembled out of two halves, even though they are quite thin, which is quite surprising <laughs> to see this design, still they are glued out of two halves. And here if I show the fuselage half here, you can see in the cockpit area we have some pre-molded features. We also get the guiding elements and this should actually come handy with such large parts just to give you an idea here is comparison with my hand they're really big so do not underestimate this kit and straight away i can say this is definitely not a thing for beginners so if you don't have enough of the skills and experience behind you definitely do not go this way because it will not be an easy build 
for sure. So here we continue with the uh, pilot seats, we also have the missiles, we have the few tanks, pylons, some parts for the engine, more parts for the pilot seat. Here we have the engine nozzle part, again some parts for the few tanks. And if I zoom in here, you can check those uh, parts for the pilot seat and engine nozzle. By the way, for the engine nozzle. So those parts look quite okay, I would say. But uh, let me remind you also that we will be checking the uh, separate set of brushing set for the exhaust nozzle. As you can see, it is designed specifically for Kinetic and Edward. It should be available at the same time, so you can basically order them together. But this is something I would recommend to get, because in 148 scale aircraft it plays a huge role on the appearance of the model. So here we continue with a few tanks. Also we have some minor elements for external elements, but overall I would say it looks quite great. And the only thing is to um, assemble all of these things together. And if I flip it over here, you can find that we have the guiding pins on, for example, engine nozzle and also the fuel tanks, which is quite nice. I probably, um, well, I suppose that the armament can be also purchased in form of the brassine set. But it will cost extra money, so the final decision is after you whether you would like to invest a bit more for some resin accessories on your aircraft. Next we continue with the final sprue, it's a sprue B. So here again we have a mix of various parts, we have the internal walls, we have the nose cone which is assembled out of two halves unfortunately. Also we have some internal components, landing gear wheels, air brakes which are molded separately and some parts for the air intakes. So I suggest we start with this corner because here we have as you can see the cockpit base as well as these cockpit walls. We also have some parts for the wheel wells. Next we continue with the nose cone which is glued out of two halves. Air intakes, the lower fuselage panel by the way here for the nose uh, landing gear area. Next we continue with air brakes and some parts for main landing gear legs because they are also quite interesting in design let's say and here you can see also the instrument panel by the way i guess if you would like to use the p parts you will have to send it and for the landing gear wheels you don't have to use those original ones because we have the brushing supplied out of the box and this resin parts they will be definitely better than what we have here in the plastic and in a few seconds we will actually find out why because they come in the separate ziplock back here which should be easy to open and then it's just a matter of taking out all of the parts and checking what we actually get here. So, uh, first of all, I would like to zoom in and show you the pilot seat. So here it is. As you can see, it is casted as a single piece part. It's obviously superior to what we can assemble out of the uh, plastic parts. And the part itself looks really nicely detailed, so it will require some careful painting, but I think it will be well deserved. And by the way, there is also the uh, special railing which is installed behind the seat. As you can see, it is also supplied as a single piece part, and it also looks impressive. Okay, next we continue with uh, two paddings. I'm not sure why we have two of them, maybe it will depend on the version of the seat, but here you can see them. If you know the answer, feel free to write in the comment section, I will be happy to learn more about this. But as you can see, the texture details, they were quite convincing, so it's something worthy of the 148 scale. Next, we continue also with uh, those minor parts. So as you can guess, those are parts of the wheel rims for the um, landing gear wheels and also we have some external elements for the fuselage. I guess we will see it in the assembly manual. That's not all because we also have the main landing gear wheels and the nose landing gear wheel. I will try to show them simultaneously. So here are they are. As you can see here we have a lot of surface details. We have also some pre-molded features on the tire walls. So that's why I was saying that those parts are definitely better than the typical plastic offering which we saw on the last sprue. And of course they will be easy to paint because I suppose the masks are actually designed for use with those parts as well. So I will find them in a second and we will check together. So yes, there are actually pre-cut masks 
for landing gear wheels and you shouldn't be worried about trying to cover them. Here you can see the masks and you can see that we have the circles for landing gear wheels and we also have masks for the canopy. But that's not all, as I said, we also have the P parts. So I can see we get actually two P frets and one is pre-painted. Here you can see all the parts. So those elements will be used for the cockpit and they look really great. I can see we have also the glazing over the dials. So it also adds uh, the nice touch to the appearance of the cockpit. But that's not all, we also have the second P fret and here we have unpainted P fret. This one uh, is more for the structural part so not only the cockpit but also some of the aircraft elements and as you can see some of them are really tiny so be ready to use the special tools because otherwise it might be tricky to get those parts in place. Next we continue with the separate plastic bag for decals. Of course they are printed in Edward so it should be quite easy and quick to I'll open this plastic bag and show you the quality which looks great out of the box and they are quite big so that's why I'm a bit struggling here with the plastic bag just give me a moment okay so first of all I would suggest to start with the main symbols so I will just bring those resin parts to the side main symbols are printed on large decal sheet and here we have also the segmentation which will come handy for getting the necessary symbols for your chosen marking option as you can see we also have the um, uh, separate segments for for example wing pylons stencils uh, ejection seat stencils also missile stencils and etc etc and everything looks quite nice so here we also get some decals for the cockpit in case you are not a huge fan of the p parts then you can use the decals to apply them directly on the surface of the plastic part. Next we also have one more decal sheet. This one is dedicated to the stencils. As you can see there are a lot of them and I can see also some separation here so maybe it will also depend on the marking option you choose but just to give you an idea if I bring it closer you can see that some of the symbols are readable and this is not just the plain, uh, let's see, symbols which do not mean anything. Next we continue with assembly manual so here I will have to zoom out even more because this assembly manual is printed as a large color printed brochure and I guess on the first page well nope we do not have any history note unfortunately we start straight away with the parts map where blue color means that those parts will not be used. Here you can see you're given a choice between decals and P parts. Red color means that you have to send the plastic parts. So be ready for that in case you choose the uh, P parts to be applied for an instrument panel, for example. Next you can see the pilot seat assembly is the resin part, as you remember, and combination of the P parts as well. And I can see that we have choice between these two lower pads so i guess the final choice will depend also on the marking you choose so do your research next we continue with the engine nozzle and here we assemble the nose landing gear wheel well then we assemble the uh, nose cone and it's also written that you should put some weight there i'm just checking it's not written how much of the nose weight should be added, so pay attention to this moment. Next we continue with the uh, more of the lower fuselage section being detailed, as you can see some P parts being installed in order to copy the subframe. Then we continue with the panels being installed onto the fuselage. Then we install the nose cone and also side air intakes. Here you can see the landing gear assembly and then we proceed with the closed or open air brakes, I guess, or landing gear doors. Because it's written here, closed or partially open uh, segments of the slower fuselage panels. So feel free to write in the comment section if, in case you have the knowledge, because here we have the brakes, air brakes actually 
on the separate page. They can be assembled on the open position. You can also have the flaps in down position, so that's also a cool feature. Of course, you can open the canopy and here I can see we have whole sequence of the actions for the closed canopy. So pay attention to this and obviously decide in advance what you would like to see on your aircraft. We have the loadout scheme, we have also the masks application guide here. Then we proceed with two marking options from 1967 and 1959. Then we have aircraft from 1967 and 1965. Here we have two aircraft from 1967. And the last one is also from Thailand, 1967. We also have the separate page for the stenciling guide. And as you can see, it actually takes two pages. So a lot of stencils to be applied on this aircraft, but in 148 scale, it's actually a good thing to have. So this limited edition should be already available, but it's a limited edition. So that's why I would recommend to hurry up if in case you would like to get one. Uh, those sets, which are based not on Edward plastic, they get sold out really quickly. So do not uh, waste your time if you would like to have one in your collection. In my opinion, this is a really nice choice because you get nice plastic together with good decals and also some resin accessories. And you can get even more in case you would like to add some uh, separately sold brushing accessories. Of course, I'll be happy to hear your opinion about this release. Do not forget to write it here in the comment section below. And if you like this video, press the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for your support and watching today's video, and I will see you. Bye.